Welcome to Tech on Deck. I'm Robert Scoville of Futures at Rackspace, and uh, we're doing a, a combined show called Tech on Deck, where we interview the top innovators from uh, technology and business, and we're having a lot of fun. Uh, hey, I, I wanted to bring my co-host in, uh, Scott Jordan, CEO and founder of Scotty Vest. Hi, Scott. Hi, Scott. It's good to be with you, Robert. I really uh, enjoy this this format where we get to talk to these innovators. These leaders of business, technology, media, you know, across all areas. And it's tech on deck for a reason. It's a double entendre because I am reporting from my beautiful deck here in Sun Valley, Idaho. And we're talking about what's next in technology. Therefore, tech on deck. So take a listen and share this podcast with your friends. What's up, uh, Scott? This is Robert Scoble. And we're having a tech on deck, a little uh, informal wrap up or a recombination of what we were doing. And I wanted to ask you, uh, how do you handle competition? Well, that's a that's a great question. First, you know, thanks for having me as your co-host on, in effect, as a guest for Tech on Deck. It was an incredible experience when you were out here with Thomas Hawk. I really enjoyed it. And uh, having watched us interview everyone, I thought perhaps. I should be under the hot lights of uh, your your interview questions, and uh, and and that that question is is really good because we were formed, you know, almost 15 years ago, and uh, up until recently, we've had no real competitors, which has really shocked me over the years. I would have thought that someone would have stepped up and and gave us a real challenge, and and the only reason I can imagine that it hasn't happened. Is what we do is really complicated. Uh, you know, it might not seem that way to a lot of people. Just put some pockets in a garment, add a feature or two, and call it done for a day. But you know, I think it's a testament to, to the fact that other clothing companies have tried to do what we've done unsuccessfully, and we're the last man standing. That is until fairly recently. Um, yeah. You know, there's. A yeah, I heard. Uh, I saw uh, you have a new competitor on Kickstarter, which is a a new platform for launching companies. So. Yeah, T it, tell me know, about that. Yeah, you know, I'm not going to name them by name because I don't want to give them any any pub. But you know, they've done an amazing job of getting. You know, when I last looked, they were close to 3.8 million dollars for a twenty thousand dollar ask, and um, that's a, that's an incredible success for any company on Kickstarter, much less clothing company on Kickstarter. So um, you know, and and it's hard. To, you know, when I first saw it, Robert, I. I got to be honest with you, especially because we had a simultaneous Indiegogo campaign for a single product, and and we met our thirty thousand uh, dollar you know goal, but you know they 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 blew past that many times over, and um, you know they they were previously a customer of ours. They bought our products back in I think February, and uh, got my book and bought several of our products, and um, we welcome competition. I really mean that. I, 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 what I like with competition is if I can learn something from them. You know, you know yeah. take what I've done, make it a little better along the way, and, and teach me something. And if you come up with something really unique, consider patenting it. It's hard to get patents in clothing. I've done so, and, and you know, I've enforced them, and it's, it's important to me. But um, I, I, I embrace innovation. So I sort of went through a 12-step process, and I think I'm still evolving from – from jealousy to anger to finally coming approaching acceptance. And what they did yeah. differently is they, they appealed to a completely different market segment than what we have. If you watch Millenni them, millennials. I, I, guess, I guess that's millennials, right? Because they used EDM music. They used a, a quick video editing technique that, that, that appeals to a younger generation, right? Mm -hmm. and they we, didn't go – they didn't – yeah, we have we we have not marketed towards a particular demographic. In fact, we might arguably have ignored millennials, and that's our fault. And 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 it's something we we shouldn't ignore. I didn't even hear the term millennial until maybe two years ago for the first time, and now I'm I'm deep inside learning. You know what what motivates them? Who are their heroes in life? You you and I have yeah. had many conversations on on this concept of heroes. So, I mean, it's, it's kind of when you look at competition, you've got to look at it at all angles. 
you know, when I hear you ask that question, I hear of, 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 a, of a knockoff of my product almost directly, which has happened to us. And I, a company from Ireland took our product, and I can't tell the difference between the two standing side by side. They didn't do that. They, 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 their product is, is, is different than ours, although they do incorporate some of the features that we have, and they, and they present it as if, it, if they just came up with it out of thin air. And I, I think that, that this honesty bothers me about it. You know, it's just, it's just, hey, you know, this company marketed towards old people has been around for 15 years. We thought we'd step in and make something better. But they're... they're, they're well, Steve Jobs... Yeah. Steve, Steve Jobs says great, great artists steal and, uh, and uh, crappy people copy, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know that that's true, and 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 he's a perfect example, and I love because they, they they're focusing on on Steve Jobs as as who they view as um as so many other startups nowadays, uh, of who they view as their hero, um you know I and I think you know copying people's ideas is free game, but along the line add some value, make it a little better, and I it's yet to be seen. I, they they do have one unique feature of a a, a head pillow that somehow integrated, other companies have tried it, we've studied it, we don't think it can be done you know, very well, I think it's a little gimmicky, we're gonna look, I'm, I'm one of their backers, so I'm looking yeah. forward to- But do you think, you know, clothing is sort of like headphones, you know, I should bring out some of these new headphones. Uh, you know, Beats uh, built a, a company that's worth billions of dollars without really having a better technology they had a better marketing plan, which was Jimmy Iovine put them on every uh, a hero on American Idol. You know, every every uh, singer had them on American Idol, and every football player had them. And uh, they were very good about getting uh, a marketing concept out there that built incredible value. It it wasn't a, a new product. It didn't add a new feature. It didn't make your life any better than you know Bose or uh, JBL or anything else. But uh, they, they built a company that Apple bought for what three billion dollars. Yeah, I, I, I think it's very interesting. I, I, you know, basically any clothing company, you're not building an item or, or, or product. You have to be building a brand, and I and I don't think that they had an opportunity to think that far ahead to build their brand yet. Their name is uh, uh, more difficult to pronounce than Scotty Vest which has been one of our biggest challenges over the years to build a, a full clothing line with a, a name that's as whimsical as Scotty Vest. And many people don't want Vest. You in particular think that our best product, and I, I find it hard to disagree, is our pants and our boxers. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, it, in fact, and, I'm wearing your pants because you can put a full, full iPhone. Let me get my iPhone going here. You know, you can put a full iPhone down in the pants, you know, and the and the pockets you have you have deep pockets so that they they're uh, resistant of uh, pickpocketers, you know. Yeah, so. and we have pickpocket guarantees associated with our our products as well. So I think the real challenge is, as you said, is to build a brand. But you know, one of the things you know that I've I've learned in this particular case is that if I want an audience, uh, if I want to expand my market, I need to talk their language. I need to use their music. I need to to show features being used in um, what? situations that. Well, let's using. talk about their music for a second, because I I've gone to Coachella and several music festivals in the last few years, and I watched EDM go from popular to explosive. I mean, I at at, at Coachella this year, uh, the D DJs were playing the biggest field to the biggest audiences, and that was not true three years ago. And I I studied why old people didn't get it. <laughs> well, I'm one I, of the old people, so tell me, why me, don't I get it? Well, me and Thomas Hawk went to Coachella three years ago, right when Skrillex was getting uh, very popular, and we had 600 millimeter lenses, and we would watch these old people drop their kids off at the Sahara Tent. Sahara Tent, at Coachella, there's seven music venues, uh, everything from... Uh, you know, stuff like Beck and Arcade Fire and ACDC, all the way up to uh, Skrillex and, uh, and the latest uh, electronic music. And electronic music was typically in the Sahara tent. Now it's so popular that, it's, that they took it, a lot of the EDM or electronic music out of the Sahara tent and put it on their main field where they can have 40,000, 50,000 people in one field. Um, but I, I watched these people, old people, would drop their kids off, you know, 17, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20-year-old kids, drop them off 
at the Sarah tent, turn around and go and watch Arcade Fire or Beck or or some some other older band. And I would I, after noticing this uh, uh, dozens of times, I started grabbing them and started asking them why. And and it, it, they actually gave me six reasons. Right. Can you guess any of them? No. One was they don't play an instrument. The kids grew up on, in a oh, world where all creativity comes through a computer screen, including us right now, right? Uh, when you talk to old people, they grew up with music like you know Led Zeppelin or The Who or The Beatles, where they're playing instruments. And I talked to Slash, actually, the famous guitarist, about this. And he goes, yeah, that's why they have to do all the electronic uh, sure. art behind them. Because yeah. there's nothing to watch. <laughs> there's a guy pushing play. <laughs> and old people don't get that, man. It, 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 it messes with their idea of what music is, right? But young kids are like, that's, oh, there's a guy playing a Macintosh. That's great. That's, that's creativity too, you know? Yeah, so um, I want to learn from from my quote unquote competitors, and and generally speaking, you know, you know, ex officio would be the next closest thing to a, a competitor, and they've knocked off some of our icons, and I look at it and examine it carefully, and, you know, but but it, it seems more simple than it is to design a pocket. Seems like oh, any idiot could design a pocket, but you have to take into account that you've got to fit a device this big, an iPhone six plus, in a small. All the way up to a triple yeah. X large. Now you might even think, well, "Oh think my that's God, why... it's simple to do a triple X large. Just make a really big pocket." But no, no, you have to have different tolerances yeah. all across, and you have to wonder how the weight's going to bear and everything else associated with it. So, I, I think that, and there's f four or five other reasons that, they, that old people don't get y young people's music. I'm sorry, uh, yeah. or this dual X music. Is it um, one was um, uh, there's no uh, lyrics. There's no story. My dad likes music oh. with a story. He likes Irish folk songs for that reason, because you listen. Country music is great for this, right? It's got a beginning, middle, I drove and end. Truck to the, it, levee. Yeah. <laughs> the levee was dry. We can we can tell our old anthems uh, by by rote because we know the stories so well, right? Um, and in EDM, there's very little lyrics, and the lyrics are very simplistic. Uh, uh, things that can be uh, uh, sung by anybody and understood by anybody, and it, 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 and uh, and they're not complex at all. Um, what was some of the other ones? The drugs, the drugs was one of them. Uh, you know, <clears throat> when we when we grew up and went to concerts, we had weak marijuana. <laughs> Today's marijuana is very strong. Um, it, you know, five to ten times stronger than the marijuana we had in uh, the seventies. And so that's one thing. And we didn't have drugs like Molly um, or I never really saw too much LSD in my in my uh, high school years. Uh, maybe you did. No, <laughs> but, no, no, a couple. But here you go into the Sahara tent and it's freely available uh, everywhere. You know, people are selling Molly back and forth. And, and um, uh, this drug does not appeal to older people it, 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 you know they, they just don't understand why you would take a synthetic drug like that so um, if, if i were to synthesize the lights. what the you're lights saying is it. without you know trying to stay on message in terms of competition is is, is to understand your market well and understand you know what 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 market you want to be in because in many yeah. respects you know what's going on now with this kickstarter campaign i think is kind of uh, more of a statement about um media and it's this year's version of the ice bucket challenge people see it they get excited they want to climb onto it they want to be a part of what they perceive to be a movement you know, and yeah. competition, in order for it to really be truly competition, it would have to take business away from my existing uh, customer base. And it's not. Our business is, if anything, it's done better as a result of this. So when I went from my initial response to anger and being upset, I was like, no, it's creating more awareness at this other market that I've been ignoring and shining a light and just showing me how big that market is. And it's it's, and it, it's giving me incentive to go after them and understand them and with my existing product, but also perhaps with a new product line. And that's why I want you to go after the pants, because uh, EDM kids who are going to an EDM festival are probably not going to wear a jacket unless it's a cold festival, right? But they are always going to wear shorts or pants. 
and they all have iPhones. Uh, in fact, at Coachella, 90% of the customers have iPhones. Wow, that's interesting. Uh, I, I interviewed the guy who runs the uh, IT systems at Coachella, and he says 90%, and that matches other music festivals, by the way. And there's a reason for that. It, it, this is the richer demographic of the customer, right? Um, if you have two thousand dollars to go to Coachella, which is what it really costs once you you know drive there and and get a hotel room for four hundred five hundred dollars a night uh, and get a festival pass which costs four hundred to nine hundred dollars, you know that's not somebody who's broke and is working for minimum wage. That's a higher end uh, somebody who has some disposable income. Um, and so that, that customer should be very attractive to you. They have disposable income. They have uh, income to buy clothing that matches their technology choices. And they're very technology astute, obviously. And that's why they're all on Kickstarter. And um, I, I think you should go after the pants and say, hey, you saw the guys with the cool jacket. We, you know, so, we have the best pants for the same kind of thing. You know? I want to come back on the other end. We're going to take a brief break here to allow you know Facebook segmenting of shorter videos, and uh, for the this is going to be available as our first um, podcast that we're going to deliver. And I want to come back and talk about the pants, and I also want to talk about you know what we talked about um, about my initial reaction, what what I thought I was going to do, and why I decided not to do it. So come back in a moment. We'll be right back on the other side. So we're back with Robert Scoble and, of course, me, and we're talking about competition, innovation, and in particular as it related to uh, uh, the recent uh, Kickstarter campaign by another clothing company and, uh, and my response. Robert, you were talking about the pants, and, and when I yeah. called you up and I told you how I felt about this, what w your idea was to, 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 to do a big promotion, you must wear pants, and, th and that was a well, awesome. I, you know, I, I always look at it uh, through the lens of positioning. I, I love the book Reese and Trout wrote about positioning. And, okay, since they got they're, they have the high-end uh, uh, position with the millennials and the jacket, and everybody responded to that. They don't have anything yet. They don't even have a product I know, but, yet. But you know, they sold $3 million. Dollars, yeah, right? yeah. So instead of trying to go at them, uh, uh, you know, straight on, head on, and say, oh, I have a, three more features – uh, go completely around them and and say, hey, you guys love these jackets, but you can't wear a jacket in July, and you can't wear a jacket at Coachella. It's too hot. But you do need pants, and you need a place for your iPhone in the pants. Sell the pants and get everybody hot and bothered about the pants. Sell $3 million of those. And then at the end of that video, say, you know, there's a reason I did the pants, because I did the jacket 10 years ago, <laughs> and position them as a Johnny-come-lately and, and uh, show that you have a full family of products, not just one product, which is what they have. And therefore, you're positioning your, your whole family of products as uh, innovative and new and interesting and that they stand alone because they don't have pants. They don't have underwear. They don't have hats. Uh, you, you guys sell a whole family of products that have pockets, and that's why I love the pocket well, man. You, there, there's, there's something to be said for that, and we went pretty far down the line where we were going to do a parody of, the, of, of their video using their same music, but showing circumstances. And then you know, we started thinking about it internally, and, 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 and a lot of suggestions were don't, don't make reference to them directly. It, 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 it might have come off as sour grapes, and let them have their moment. They have to be careful what they wish for. Given my 15 years of experience, it would be an absolute nightmare to have, by the time they're through with this campaign, $5 million of, of orders that need to be delivered in two months from now, yeah. logistically setting up what it's going to take. If they can accomplish that, my hat's off to them. I, I really mean it. it. It's almost, it's unthinkable, especially when they were preparing to do a twenty thousand dollar campaign, and they're at five million. Imagine the onslaught of emails they're all going to get the day they start shipping out, assuming they can figure out how to ship out and take care of exchanges. So it's not it's not easy. So ultimately, we 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 decided rather than compare ourselves or contrast ourselves or anything, let them have their moment, congratulate them, and learn from them. We're, we we've ordered one of every one of their products. We're going to send them out to a blogger, you know, together next to the most similar version of ours without any, 
you know, to, do an unboxing. Tell us your candid thoughts side by side. You know, no predetermined, you know, uh, result. And we're going to do the same and and say, hey, you know, you want to you, you you've exposed the market. Now look at the other alternatives. It only makes all boats get higher. But they got to learn, yeah. make my stuff better. I want my stuff to be better as yeah, a result see, I, of what I learned from them. I, I still don't think you're uh, you're quite listening. OK, there is a market that they identify. Yes. I think you can take your pants to that market before they can, because they're going to be too busy fulfilling these orders, and they're not going to understand how to build pants and how to market them in the same way that th that they did. How can I You're do gonna that be without able... seemingly like being an ass? How can I? How you can don't I... even mention them. I I don't. I think your instincts are right. I you know come out and say this is the pants for the next generation. You know, and you want to put your iPhone in a pants. Your iPhone, if you put them in a jeans, bends right. You put them in your pants, they don't bend. And if you're a traveler and you have you know passports in your pants, uh, these things are not going to get pickpocketed. And that's a real problem when you're traveling, right? So Absolutely. I don't know. You can whole, do a whole thing about pants. But let's take it to technology. You know, yeah. I, I was in uh, BlackBerry's booth the day the iPhone came out. And I, I went up to one of the executives uh, of senior vice president and said, what are you guys going to do about what Apple just did? And and his answer was very arrogant, and it, it was like, uh, they don't know how to build a phone, you know? It wasn't the kind of attitude you're taking, which is, we should learn from that, we should come out with a new product, we, sh we need to go back and work and really make sure we stay up to date in the industry. It was uh, almost a derision, and Nokia reacted the same way, and look at where both companies are today, right? No, I, I, and I think that's really, really important. I've got to remain humble, I've got to learn as things change. I know that when Samsung come, came out with, the, I guess, what's it called, a phablet, you know, the, the mid space between a phone, their Note version, you know, I said, holy crap, I've got to get into design and make sure, number one, do all my phone pockets fit the larger devices? If they don't, what do we need to do to, to change them and start already innovating? Same with for tablets. We, when tablets started coming out, we had to redesign our products to accommodate tablets. We're always trying to stay ahead of the curve. When I originally designed Scotty Vest, there were so many different devices. There were, you know, uh, camcorders and, and disc men. I mean, Scotty Vest started before the iPod. So, you know, trying yeah. to always contemplate what customers, what their needs are. This is most interesting because it's not the needs, it's, but it's the customers. It's how you speak to the, yeah. that customer. So it's not so much, you know, competition in terms of can you make a better product than I can? Can you come up with a better message that will get through to, the, to your, your customers and who you want your customers to be. And then in this yeah. case, Kickstarter was the perfect pl platform. It also was the perfect it, storm and viral it, media. Yesterday I, yesterday I spoke to Cable Labs, which is the R&D arm of the cable industry, and they're already meeting with, with regular everyday people and putting virtual reality goggles on them to study how they react to them and study what kinds of services they're going to expect when these uh, virtual reality goggles come. Is that something that you guys do at, at Scotty Vest? Do you meet with regular people and talk about clothing and talk about how they react to things? You know, it, it's interesting. I, I kind of have a, a Steve Jobs, and I hate to compare myself to him because everyone does, approach to, uh, to, to market research. And that is, you know, um, you know, how do people know what they want before they've seen it? And I, I, I kind of see the future on w what the devices are. And I stay up to, uh, you know, that's why I'm a lot more. That's why we like to hang out and we talk about technology because I'm not just all about clothes. I'm about people's lifestyles, what people are using in technology. And then I think whether they want to incorporate. Here's a perfect example. A, a number of years ago, in terms of innovation um, and competition, a company called Kempo, K-E-N-P-O, was designing a full line of, of outerwear that had outward controls for your iPhone. And you had yeah. to wire your iPhone up, and they spent millions of dollars on marketing it. And I looked at it, and I said, I don't understand this. In my head, I didn't do a bunch of focus groups. I'm like, why do I need... A, a, a remote control to control something the size of a remote control it, and, and to wire it and everything else associated with it. So I personally, I, I, and maybe it's, maybe it's arrogant. I, I it, maybe it is, but I, I don't think I need to do that, but we do reach out to experts 
Um, we, we have a chiropractor that we refer to because one of the biggest issues for us, and they're going to learn this, this other company, is weight management and the impact of putting more things on one side versus others and what it does to the weight on your shoulder or, worst case, the back of your neck. The very first yeah. product we came out with, the Evest 1.0, we rushed to market. We we're so anxious. We made a ton of them, and every one of them put all the weight in the center of the neck. They were excruciating. So I learned from that moment forward that I had to focus all my attention on making sure our, all, of our, all of our items were comfortable and ma managed the weight that people were carrying. So not sure that's the way yeah. you wanted me to answer, but you know, that's, that's the answer. Now, the, you know, Steve even did uh, focus groups, and he, he certainly uh, walked around stores and, and understood how people, where the pressure points were in the industry. Yes. I, you know, I, I'm not uh, going to suggest that I'm not going to learn lifestyles, and I'm doing it now about marketing to millennials. But I'm not, I, I don't, yeah. you know, with, with, what do you search for? And that's one of the reasons why I'm so excited about this, because we're buying their keyword. People are searching all sorts of things related to this, this overwhelmingly successful Kickstarter campaign. And when they go online to search, you know, we, we buy their keyword and we come up and that's, that's fair. When, what do you search for when you didn't know it existed? Multi-pocketed yeah. jacket with pickpocket proof pockets and clear touch and a personal area network and RFID. What do you search for? There's nothing to compare yourself to. But now there is, yeah. now arguably there is. I just searched on best travel pants. I don't see you guys coming up yet. So. Um, I, I, we're gonna have to. We're gonna have to change that. I, we 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 ought to. We there. But the, by super. the way, I I got a tour of Zappos a few years ago, and the one team that wouldn't show me anything or talk to me was the SEO team. That's their secret sauce, and they do exactly this, right? They c try to come up with theories of how people are searching for things, and then they actually verify them using Google's tools. And and doing A/B tests and uh, building and testing things, right? Um, is that sort of how you guys do the same thing? You know, because for, for instance, we, we, I just gave you best travel pants. I I have no idea how many people are searching for best travel pants. I see Travel Smith and Travel Clothing at REI and other things. Um, I, I, I'll be first on my agenda to talk to my SEO guy as to why we we don't have it. I mean, you you know that what you're seeing isn't necessarily a reflection of whether we're bidding on that term or not. You know, Google's no, got all sorts of scores and stuff like that. But yeah, it's a complicated, you know, you know I woke up one day and realized that, that for example, um, money belts and fanny packs are our competition because they serve the same yeah. purpose. So we're buying yeah. those terms. But Really, honestly, there isn't that much money to be made. There aren't a lot of people searching those terms. If you're looking yeah. for, you know, um, a, a money belt, you're not going to want a Scotty vest. More than likely, yeah. you're going to want a money belt. That's what your your mindset was. But I think isn't this why? Isn't this why the uh, the Red Bull and the Nike and the and the GoPro and um, uh, the Beats guys who put their brand on celebrities do so well because it, it it's not something you search for. You don't search for a headphone. You're not going to find any useful information if you search for headphones. Um, but if you see your favorite music star wearing a certain brand, it makes that brand safe for you to buy for your kids or whatnot. Is that are are you thinking about how to use celebrity tying like that, like it, like the the GoPros and the Red Bulls do? Not quite the same way, but more. You know, we're rethinking a lot of things now, so that's part of it. But you know, we're thinking about using the celebrities that are already our customers, um, yourself yep. included. I I think we're underutilizing you and Guy Kawasaki and uh, you know uh, Amy Tan and, and 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 Herbie Hancock. But but then again, those are all a generation that aren't are not millennials. But I, I, it's yeah. always been my assumption that we haven't fully uh, um, tapped into those people. And and I now you got to get you know Porter Robinson or Skrillex or uh, you know uh, all, all sorts of different artists who are appealing to the millennial generation to wear your products. You know, I think and that would be I think that would be a, a, a grand slam and 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 that should be something. But that's a slow, that's a long lead. That's not something I go out and just do. They have to be using it. They have to love it. They've got to be taking stuff out. 
you know, our, our stuff, you know, one of the, the, the highlights of it, other than the, my, my shirt with my branding right here, our branding is not that obvious. I mean, you know, yeah. rack space. But Scotty Vest, you see someone wearing now, it. Now, you guys make custom uh, corporate wear, too, which is an example of stuff that you do. You know, you put rack space on my shirt. So. To expand. Um, yeah. No, so I, um, I, I where think... else do we go with with go competition? You know, um, when, I, when I meet uh, with startups, one of my favorite questions is, who is your competition? Because if you say, I have no competition, then all of a sudden I start thinking you're in a small market, right? Because everybody has competition. Even Uber has competition, right? Well, for, for many years, I, I literally would have answered the question, I, I have none. And I, I still, in many respects, other than you know anything that's able to carry stuff, I have none. But you have to worry because if you have no competition, you have no reason to innovate. And it, you know, for most people, and um, and and in our case, that uh, you know, I've I've tried really hard not to to get lazy or fat, and, and and constantly innovate from clear touch pockets to improving the personal area network to incorporating RFID. But it's interesting. This other company, and then we're going to take a break and come back for um, one more segment or two. Is um, their their last update this this company was looking towards incorporating and innovating a jacket that that measured your body temperature so that when you walked into your house it would set your thermometer to according to your body temperature now i know this is something you i and hap kind of danced around is what is, what are wearables how much should your clothing do for you my feeling is they should go in that direction as much as they want. It's a massive mistake. <laughs> it's, it's idiotic. I don't know that I want to walk in the door and have my body temperature adjust my air conditioning on or off. I can do it on my own. If my home is at a comfortable level, my body will adapt to the home instead of my home adapting to my body. So, you know, watching them, you know, consider, and I, I imagine they're going to end up listening to this, you know, um, you should rethink that strategy and you know um, see where it goes and and related strategies. So they they actually are starting to you know come up with a brand called you know we have technology enabled clothing. So they want to do technology powered clothing. It's a little close to my trademark and a little uh, I like to see them do their own thing. Don't copy. You know do what I'm doing but do it better. So on that note, we're going to take a, a little break here and we'll be back on the other side. So stay with us. All right, we're back. So, Robert, come on, hit me hard. Hit me hard. What, what do you got? Come on. Take the gloves <laughs> off. Well, you know, it, there's a, a bunch of different ways to look at product and, and uh, competition. We, we've covered a lot of the fashion aspects. You know, how do you stay relevant? How do you uh, find a new audience? Uh, how do you uh, st uh, stay ahead or, or catch up when uh, somebody innovates and comes up with a feature that you didn't think about? You know, a la the iPhone versus the BlackBerry. Uh, and obviously, uh, BlackBerry didn't do well with that uh, matchup. You know, Google, on the other hand, said, "Well, okay, Apple beat us. Uh, let's figure out how to build another uh, innovative brand uh, that that's competitive with the iPhone, and, and it's done pretty well." Android. Um, I re I remember when Vic, you know, Vic Condotra was, was one of the team members at Google who came up with Android, and he said. He he told me back when Apple had all of the market share. People forget that you know in the high end smartphone industry, Apple had all the market share at one point. He goes, "Watch what we do. We're going to get people to believe in us, and we're going to uh, work on a, a new business model uh, through the carriers to get the product out." And it, that's a question: How do you think about distribution? Because uh, to me, distribution is key to life. If I can get my idea to you. I have a business. If I can't get my idea to you, it doesn't matter how cool that idea is. That is an awesome question. And, 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 and it, I don't even know where to begin because it, there are two facets of it. There's one is the idea because if you can't get the idea, you can't get the product. We were the very uh, first company, apparel company, that uh, went straight to the internet direct to consumer. Before us, there was Land's End and uh, you know all these J. Crew, and they had brick and mortar, and they added, um, you know, we, we've been in business 14 years now. They added web on as an add-on, but they did not start building their brand 
online like Scotty Vest did. We were a real pioneer in that regard. After us came Bonobos and Warby Parker and a variety of other, everyone takes it for granted. So it really has a lot of limitations when you go direct to consumer online and, and your marketing message is limited. So distribution really is, you know, should we have brick and mortar stores? I mean, clothing, yeah. Bonobos ultimately decided they needed to have guide shops to grow their business. And they started brick yeah. and mortar stores. Warby Parker has a lot of physical locations now too. So I do believe that in order to expand my business that I need physical locations, which is odd because, you know, with the billions of people on, on the Internet, why, why isn't there unlimited growth potential there? But unless you are talking to different groups of people using their language, it's really hard to do that. So that I, I don't know the answer to that. I know this, that if once you go brick and mortar, it's capital intensive and it's human resource intensive. We're self-funded yeah. and we have 15 employees and it, you know it's mom and pop. You met Laura, my wife and there you know it and and 12 13 other employees. We're not set up for managing, you know, a whole slew of people throughout the country and in our case, we don't have to grow because we're self-funded and and we don't have to beat them. We just have to continue doing well and, 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 and be happy about where we are. But, you know, it is frustrating to see opportunities there that I'm not able to tackle or haven't tackled yet. I don't know. Did, did, did that answer it partially or? Yeah, yeah. I, you know, it's something I care about deeply about. I'm always asking my friends, where do you, you know, read news? Where do you uh, want to interact with me? Uh, or where, where are you? I ask, you know, how many, where do you post on? Do you post on Twitter? Do you post on Facebook? Do you post on LinkedIn? Do you post on Google Plus? And I watch what people's reactions are and how emotional they are because I need to understand where the distribution is. And that, if the yeah, distribution is shifting. circle because that's, we spent a lot of time here in July talking on Tech on Deck, you know, about that very issue. With so much noise out there, how do you get through all the noise? Now, they did it through Kickstarter. You know, they, yeah. they found a channel and they worked the media, you know, to, to get them to build on it. And it's built upon itself. So, I, you know, we're, we're thinking about it. I, I, I wish I knew that there was a silver bullet answer. J Jim Louderback, who was also on Tech on Deck, he's like, Scott, you're, you're on Facebook. Millennials aren't on Facebook. You know, you're not. You're, Snapchat. I don't understand Snapchat. I, you know, I'm an idiot. I, do I, what, what do I put something up and it goes away immediately? I don't. I understand yeah. it as between two teenagers sharing pictures of their private parts, but I don't understand it as 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 a brand. So Snapchat used to be that they have a new thing called Stories, where you can put uh, pictures or a video up and people will watch that, and then it goes away. But it's a very strong uh, marketing tool for millennials. I just was meet, met with an executive from Coca-Cola, and he says they're going after e-gaming uh, because they noticed that huge audiences were showing up for these new e-games, uh, 10,000 people in a stadium, and he said there was no brands around. So there was a new, a new marketing channel for Coca-Cola to have uh, uh, distribution to. Interesting. And uh, so even the big guys are thinking about this. How do we find a new inexpensive way to get to uh, millennials, get to interesting people where there's not a lot of competition and not a lot of clutter? Well, one thing, Guy, Guy Kawasaki, another guest, you think I only know the people that we talked to two weeks ago or three weeks ago. He's been dying to get me to do is go to South by Southwest and set up a booth. So, you know, I, I believe this year we're going to do that. I was supposed to go with you um, earlier this year. Next year we're going to do it, I mean. But to have young people go to events and festivals with lighter weight stuff, not full-on jackets, but, you know, our polo shirts and hats and the like, and, and get them to expose our brand there. And, and we came up with a really clever idea. I got to give Laura all the, all, all the uh, credit for this. We're gonna, Laura and I are going to start a, a 501c3, a charitable corporation called Pocket Change. And we're going to yep. encourage people to round up whatever's in their cart and we're going to donate it. We haven't figured out all the, all the ins and outs, but donate it to charity, you know, whatever it's pocket changed. And, and the idea is that, well, it's obvious that everyone together can put, you know, a few pennies here and a few pennies there. And it really does add up. And, and we're going to encourage people that drawer that everyone dumps out their change, you know, go and, and, and think about donating that to charity. 
you know, and, and that's our way that we can help make a difference. And, and cause I think it's important that you give this generation. It's not enough that Laura and I give a lot of money to charity. I think it's enough that we set an example and that we do it more publicly so that we, other people will get the idea too. Yeah. So um, um, where and, else should we go with this? You know, how should a CEO deal with uh, just straight up copycats or uh, that's a good question. Brand destruction that comes with, you know, a, a copy of a bag or something like that. Well, I think they need to, to first thing what's happening now is, is not just straight up copycats. A lot of people approach me and we do have patents and it looks like they're, 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 they're touching on our patents. I can't tell. You know, I, I, until I see the product and I can have my lawyer, you know, look at my claims. You know, I'd rather not litigate. It's not my preference, so I, but I have to be prepared to do so if need be. But I think you have to step back and, and learn from the opportunity. And, and, and once you get away from the, the bitterness of, you know, of their success, you have to just say, you know, what, what is it I can learn? And in this case, I learned how to do a successful Kickstarter campaign. We may very well do our own in our own style, but not copying them. Uh, I think you have to you have to look at the market opportunity that it creates, the awareness that, that it does. But straight up copycats, the Fendi bags that you see and the fake Rolexes, that's disgusting. That's just, uh, you know, yeah. a, another company copied one of my products and so much so you held it next to each other. You could not tell the difference. They literally took my product, you know, everything except the logo and said, make this identically. And they did, and they, they advertised it as in their about us. And, and so does this other company. They said, I came up with this idea, the jacket you always wanted that never existed. And this other guy said, you know, I thought I'd come up with a perfect solution and that no one's thought about. It, it, that disgusts me. I mean, to give credit where credit's due, but do better. And I, yeah. I, I in that case, well, I well, marketing one hundred and one is don't mention your competition, right? I've done uh, a good job. Uh, Blendtec, by the way, you're you're not the only CEO this happens to, right? No. Uh, Blendtec's uh, founder Tom Dickinson uh, sued uh, Vitamix uh, for copying his new blender design. His blender design had square edges and had a certain kind of propeller um, uh, to to work, and he he came up with real innovation, and they just wholesale copied it and he won 24 million dollars in court uh proving that they copied his innovation right so you do have to d defend a true patent if, if you have a real patent that has actual real innovation you you do have to decide whether you're going to go to court and defend it right yeah and i and i have and mark cuban and i had this discussion he thought it was too obvious to you know a hole in a pocket in a loop and and, you know, and obviously, you know, our patent and the court system felt differently in that case. But, you know, I do think one thing I want to I want to impress upon people when I first started this bu business 15 years ago, I think every entrepreneur believes that they need to come up with an idea that is truly unique, that no one else has thought about. And they need to patent it and they need to protect it until they come up with this amazing idea that they shouldn't start their business. And, and I think that, that that inhibits a lot of great businesses from starting. And, and nothing yeah. could be further from the truth and it's proven by this company in particular. They didn't come up with an original idea. They took an idea that was out there and it's, it's okay to do this. I, and I'm not upset. They took an idea and they did their own spin on it. They, I believe, respected intellectual property. So my message is, I spent the first five years of my business, every third word on my webpage, patent pending, we'll sue you, patent pending, you know, and, you know, and really it was overwhelming. Take an idea someone else did. See if they've done the, their homework and gotten patents. If they did, stay away from their patents or design around. If they didn't, most businesses don't. You know, and, yeah. and do it better, do it better. And doing it better means making a better product, marketing it better, be providing better customer service. There's a lot of things you can do better, but don't just do exactly what someone else does and do start that business. There are a million ideas that someone else is doing. Just do it a little differently and do it a little better and be intellectually honest with yourself and your customers. You'd be surprised if this company would have said, Hey, old dude, you know, gray hair, making this product for old fuddy duddies. We came up and made it for you, the millennial, and this is what it looks like. We hope you like it. I think that they would have gotten a lot more traction because at the end of the day, street cred means something. Uh, maybe I'm wrong. I don't yeah. know. They've gotten pretty much. You probably are. Yeah. <laughs>
you, as a business person, you do need to uh, defend trademarks, and that's very, very different than yes. defending a patent. Yes, and I've I've had every issue with trademark. I mean, I, the Scott, the E in Scotty Vest looked like a lo, uh, like an italicized E, very similar to E and E Business Solutions. IBM sued me. Can you believe that? The E, yeah. and then Scott USA sued me when we moved here to catch them because they thought we were trying to confuse people into thinking that we had something to do with Scott USA and, you know, bicycles and ski poles and ski goggles. We've had our fair share of trademarks, and, and it is important that you take, to, to, and that, that's, that's exhausting to find a name that someone hasn't thought about and copyrighted and protect that. That, that, that is something that you have to do due care on. And coming up with a name that's easy to pronounce. So don't use a name like Scotty Vest. It's a hard name. Say it again. Say it for me, Robert. Scotty Vest. Scotty Vest. <laughs> um, I've really enjoyed this, Robert. Um, I hope I've, yeah. I've answered all the, the hard questions. I hope people have learned from this or, you know, and if they have any feedback um, in particular, I, I'd love to hear it. Um, and how we're so doing what, with So when do the pants of the future come out? You know, <laughs> the pants are already out and we're adding more colors and, and more features. And we've got the Fiesta waistband so that they expand. We have the shorts. Well, see, that's a, that's a feature for a, a fat old white guy like me. I know. I thought <laughs> yeah. about that. You know, you know, it's awesome. But, you know, I don't think millennials experience the, uh, the, the expanding bellies like you and I do. So. <laughs> so what's next for Tech on Deck? Let's talk. Uh, you know, let's wrap up with... Um, you know that no i i'd like to give everyone a little quick tour of my house as well oh sure well let's talk about tech on deck for a second i think we hit on something by using video conferencing technology to do an event because uh it, it lets us generate content very very cheaply and find a new audience for it and uh, convince really high-end people to uh, join our event uh, high-end people, like I, I sat next to John Scully last night, the former CEO of Apple. He's just too busy doing what he's doing. He's he's rich. He's investing in a new mobile phone company. He gets demands from everybody who wants them him to keynote their, their event. So for him to get uh, invited to an event and speak, you're going to have to come up with, you know, sixty, seventy, eighty thousand dollars $80,000. But if you can say, oh, call in for an hour – you might get him because then he can sit on his couch and call you for an hour and he's done with it. He doesn't have to get on a plane. He doesn't have to make all the travel plans. He doesn't have to get a hotel, uh, you know, and he doesn't have to be away from what he likes to do. Um, and, uh, and, and so you're going to get a much higher quality of person to join a video conference than to uh, join a new, you know, uh, yeah, uh, I, conference I, I, like Antra. I agree. Yeah. I also think that um, what's next is, is is less live streaming. And, and you and I are in, in the process of, of, of packaging up all the videos that w we had during the event and putting them on the Tech on Deck fan page and, and pushing them out for people to watch at their own time. Because, you know, although it was timely with the events going on and people liked the buzz, you know, I think people much prefer the DVR lifestyle you know, let me watch it and listen to it on my own time. So for that reason, we're going to make them available in podcast to download as we are here. This is not a live broadcast. And um, I hope to do this at CES or, you know what, this is a perfect yeah. platform. You in uh, Half Moon Bay, me in beautiful Sun Valley, Idaho, on my deck, you with a deck behind you somewhere and uh, do more of these in this fashion. I have a deck down here. <laughs> that counts. Um, yeah, it, you know, it, it it's interesting, you know, talking about the live streaming, the industry is arguing out about Periscope and Meerkat and uh, Hang With and Hang With just sent me a press release today, uh, you know, and they're sort of uh they're flummoxed by this new competition because they have more features than Periscope and Meerkat, but Periscope and Meerkat That's a took perfect off example. because they were marketed better and they were better designed for one specific feature, which is social and I think this is what what happens with companies. They they don't understand why they're not able to compete with a new competitor. And uh, it'll be interesting to watch that. And it'll be interesting to watch if Facebook can edge its way in because Facebook has more users than anybody. And if they can figure out the social piece of the uh, video, uh, I think they're going to do some big damage to Periscope. I, I, I agree completely. 
Well, this was awesome. Hey. Let's ra- wrap it up. Robert, thanks a lot. Thanks for listening. If thanks. Everyone's listening. Uh, I'm Scott Jordan. I am out of here. And uh, Robert, you're awesome. Thanks. You're awesome, too. And thanks for the clothes, especially the ones with the Rackspace logos on them. Awesome. So that's a wrap. Robert, that was another great episode of Tech on Deck. I really appreciate it. If you like what you heard, please be sure to leave a a review on uh, iTunes. Put some comments and show notes, and please share it with your friends. Robert, thanks again. Thanks for having me on, and remember to like us on our Facebook page, Tech on Deck.